Hey YouTube, the Pew Research figures tracking American religious, religiosity over the last eight years are in and I've come to a graveyard to choose a plot for our favourite cult. The results are interesting and as we know the fastest growing group is the non-religious followed by Muslims who have nearly doubled which shows God's blessings on secular Bereans and people that follow a false god entirely according to Jehovah's Witness logic. But how it relates to witnesses is very interesting. Over the last year, eight years, the cult has seen its membership age. Those over 65 represent approximately one in four members, up from only 14% before. This indicates that the cult is not replacing victims that die of old age. Those in the 18 to 29 age bracket have sensibly voted with their feet and are only 15% now, down from 21% of the membership. We are watching the slow death of a cult. It's going to die, and young people hearing this will see it happen. When statisticians see a profile like this, they know the cult will stagger on for a few years, then suddenly collapse. Women make up 65% of the membership, up from 60%. This gender disparity will also speed up decline since few willingly pass up the opportunity for full family life when there are plenty of partners available outside the Kingdom Hall. Men have been consciously leaving the cult rather than dying off because the divorced or separated membership is only 12%. The widowed even less and most witnesses are married at 53% whilst a tell in 21% have never married. From those figures, it's likely to be mostly women or men that avoid marriage for whatever reason. I'm sure we might be able to make a guess. White people are actively leaving the cult. Unfortunately, Latinos and black people are stepping in. This cult has registered a 0.1% increase over eight years, with a margin of error stated at 0.6%, or in other words, negligible, if at all. Now that 32% of witnesses are Latin American, what's the betting we'll have a Latino on the governing body inside 10 years? During the survey interval, witnesses have become much poorer, with about 50% earning a household income of less than 30,000 American dollars, up from 42% and those that have generous incomes deserting, now down to only 4%. But we could see this come in because witness, witnesses remain amongst the most poorly educated people in America, with 63% of its victims having ended their education at high school or before. Only 3% hold a higher degree. From this we can build a profile of the stereotypical Jehovah's Witness. This is the typical governing body demographic, their perfect victim. It's a married woman in her late 40s or above, very often a, a, a minority, struggling financially as a result of her undereducation. If she isn't married, she's most often never been married. To put all this in perspective, witnesses have about the same number as Buddhists or Hindus, fewer than Muslims, and are way behind the godless. They're behind the Mormons and have to look over their shoulder at the Native American religions that are not hugely behind even though they get Saturday morning lines. Out of a hundred Americans only two legs and a torso would be a witness just like a zombie. That's less than the number that work for Walmart and McDonald's but they cause so much damage for a little cult with delusions of grandeur and persecution but we don't need to worry because they're dying out. But from a business perspective, the governing body will recognise they have an existential crisis coming and will be trying to extract more money from the older people by any means necessary. We may even see them invent another crisis to trick the members out of cash, like 1975, when they were investing in expensive printing equipment whilst encouraging the sheep to sell their houses and give them the proceeds. We may even see entry requirements for Bethel relax a bit and other relaxations designed to keep the membership artificially high. Either way, the pool of people inclined to take them seriously is declining.
Not even their own children are prepared to swallow it, let alone anyone with access to the internet and an ounce of common sense. Unfortunately, even when the cult does die, they'll still own all the property and benefit from that. My speculation is that Judge Rutherford's family are the secret owners, beneficiaries of this cult. Rutherford was clearly a driven and ruthless businessman. I'm sure he'd have been thinking of family legacy.